Hello, welcome to Jask Draws. I am Jask and I draw. In this video, I will be showcasing both the line art and the coloring process for a full-blown illustration featuring three original characters. Usually I write up the things I'm going to say in this video before I record anything, but for parts of this I did not write down anything, so if it gets a little bumpy or inconsistent in terms of narration, that's why. So, the characters themselves, if you've seen my other videos or follow me on social media, two of them are recognizable. If not, good news, because I'm here to talk about them for the next 18 minutes. The third character I have not shared any significant art for either here or on my art blog, so she's relatively new to everyone. All three of these characters are from my most favorite collection of D&D characters, the Kelhorn family. The Kelhorns have more than three members in it, but for this particular drawing I only drew these three. The first guy here is Natorus Kelhorn, the eldest son of the Kelhorn family. He's obviously an elf, and also less obviously, a sorcerer warlock. Neither of these magical paths are the ones that he intended to take, and if I'm being honest, he does not like being either one of them. Natorus studied wizardry for a very long time, specifically the School of Evocation. He was quite skilled and was having a lovely time being a wizard. But after witnessing his friend and longtime mentor summon Orcus, Lord of the Undead, Natorus's connection to magic was shifted and he could no longer use magic the same way he was able to as a wizard. He was knocked down to the level of a novice and had to start magical studies all over again as a sorcerer. He entered into a warlock pact relatively recently, and did so by pacting with Orcus. This was likely a bad decision, but he's yet to face those consequences in their entirety. He does have his own video in which I talk extensively about him, so if you'd like to know more about those circumstances, there's a link you can click on the screen as well as in the description. The second character in the lineup is Ophelia Kelhorn. She is the mother of both the boys in this drawing, and is the one I have yet to share with many of you. Ophelia is a retired adventurer, having had her share of journeying in her more youthful centuries. She's an eldritch knight and taught all of the Kelhorn children everything they know about weapons and fighting, not just her own sons. She also tutored them in basic magic as well as taught them how to speak undercommon. Now that all the kids are grown up though, I like to think she spends her time as a teacher educating the locals on the same things that she taught her family. Imparting lessons, wisdom, sharing proper swordsmanship skills, anything you can think of. She's a kind-hearted and patient person, always willing to listen to people who just need to talk to somebody. She's also equally stubborn and disciplined, and is quite the hardened warrior. She would absolutely don her old equipment if she needed to protect people who could not protect themselves. She's always ready to fight for others, and has shared the philosophy of protection with her family and whoever else is willing to listen to that philosophy. She's humble, caring, any positive thing you can say about somebody, you can say about Ophelia. I love her very much. Last but not least, we have Erakora Chales. Despite his surname, he is definitely a full-blooded Kelhorn. This beefy boy is the barbarian of the family, and he's also the prettiest of them all. He's the second most kind right behind his uncle, I think, which is a little bit silly considering that Erakora is also a professional bounty hunter. He's a devoted sort of person, and due to that devotion, he always sees his bounties through to the end, granted that the bounty is justified. There's been quite a few that he's dropped or lied about over the years in order to protect the targets, or that he found out were based on false charges and chose not to pursue. He's very careful about taking the lives of others and would prefer not to do it at all. However, he will if the proper conditions are met. They're just really specific conditions, so it doesn't happen a lot. He does not like killing, and if he can avoid it, he will. As it happens, Erakora is supposed to be hunting Natorus at the moment. Natorus was wanted for murder and a bounty was issued for him, and obviously given that they're brothers, Erakora wanted to find him first in case Natorus was actually innocent. And even if he was guilty, Erakora wanted to find him first out of a sort of, uh, 
duty-bound feeling to eradicate and correct the evil errors of his kin. However, he got sidetracked into a mission to save the world and has not been tracking his brother at all. So that's fine. Natorus is more or less out of harm's way for the time being anyway. Erikora has another video where I talk a lot more about him, so if you want to hear me talk about the prettiest Kelhorn, links will be in places that they usually are. It is at this point that I will note that the boys have two different fathers. I do not know the names of their dads or anything about them. I gave full dad NPC rights to the DM, so who knows? Maybe I'll meet them someday, and maybe I won't. I've only been told that one of them is sort of a jerk and the other one is less of a jerk. But that's fine, because I have Ophelia and she is perfect. Way back when this campaign first started, the only Kelhorn I made was Natorus. Later, during an in-character discussion, I ended up talking about his quote-unquote alive and well family. Natorus, the darling he is, does not lie about anything, so I had worked myself into a bit of a corner in the family department. I gave him a nameless mom and brother and eventually decided to develop them a bit, starting with Ophelia. I did do some concept art for her last year, but it was far from anything impressive. I also did a 14-panel comic about her coming into contact with the party during the time of Natorus's arrest and murder spree, so that was really fun to explore. But uh, when I was putting down concepts for her, I worked backwards from what Natorus looked like and sort of used, like, reverse genetics to figure out how she'd look. As such, I chose to make her look similar to Natorus, therefore making him look more like her than his dad. Straight hair, narrower eyes, small frame, slim face. He and Ophelia have the same eye color, just, you know, small stuff. Ericora, though, looks much more like his dad than Ophelia. He got her hair color, the shape of her chin, and her timeless beauty. Technically speaking, the curliness of his hair is also a Kelhorn gene, it's just a recessive one. Ophelia's brother has curly hair, as does his daughter, and the youngest child does not have curly hair. So Ericora could have gotten the curly hair from Ophelia, but both boys got their height from their dads, and Era also has his dad's eyes. His muscles, because I must talk about them, came from no elf, but from very diligent exercise. And yes, it was entirely necessary to think this deeply about the genetics of my Dungeons & Dragons family. That is all the details about the Kelhorns that I'm going to be sharing in this particular video, so I'm going to turn the music up so you can watch me draw without any narration for a change. But I will be back in a little bit with more commentary.
before I run out of time, I'm going to pop in and start talking about the composition of this piece while I can. I do not usually draw scenes. I am more of a character artist than an illustrator. The only time I usually draw full-blown illustrations like this with multiple characters in a background is for prints or if something is going to get published. So for a casual drawing, this was definitely out of my comfort zone. Originally, when I was putting this together, it was only Natoris and Aerokora in it. They were going to be fighting back to back, and it was really just a throwaway drawing. I never intended for it to become what it became. I threw Ophelia in there completely on a whim. I wanted to draw a whole reference for her, but I didn't know what her entire armor outfit would look like. I didn't know what colors she would wear. I'd never drawn her to an extent enough to be able to draw a reference. So I scooted them both over, stuck her in the middle, and created a scene in which all three of them are training or fighting an off-screen enemy. I'm not entirely sure what's going on, but it looks good, so that's what matters in the end. Originally, I was not going to draw a background with so many detailed trees and shrubs or anything that you see me drawing right now, I was not intending to draw at all. After I laid down the flat color for the three characters, I was going to desaturate them and stick them in a nighttime or more or less an evening type scene so I could get away with not having to draw a background. I was also going to put rolling fog or, like, clouds of dust or something uh, in the foreground to obscure the bottoms of their feet and to also obscure the background more. I really did not want to draw a super detailed background at all, but the more I ended up coloring it, the more I figured I couldn't get away with it, so I came up with a very quick forest-type setting. I started to color all of the trees white and bluish. I was going to go for uh, birch trees. I personally really like the aesthetic of birch trees. They're one of my favorite trees, so I wanted to put them in my drawing. But after I had so many on the screen all next to each other, especially in comparison to the way that the three Kelhorns were colored, the birch just was not working well, so you'll see me go over the trees and mess with the colors a little bit and switch them all over to just a casual, regular looking brown. Also, pro artist tip, if you don't have to draw 56 trees, don't draw 56 trees. Draw 4 trees, resize them, and flip them instead. You'll save yourself so much time and nobody will be able to tell. Also, if you don't have to draw or don't want to draw every single leaf on a bush, don't draw every single leaf on a bush. Just draw a bushel of leaves and create the bush like that. Copy the bushel, flip the bushel horizontally, rotate it a little bit maybe, resize it, you know. Draw as little as possible. You can get away with it in digital art. To be honest, I was not entirely satisfied with how the background came out and where the bushes were and everything, but I didn't know how to go about fixing it or to add more without making things look too busy or too distracting from the three characters who were supposed to be the focus. So in the end, I kept it to uh, not much more detailed than what you can see at the moment. I was going to maybe throw some flowers in on the shrubs or maybe some more beams of light. I made it a little bit dusty as if things were flying through the air and the sunbeams were catching them. But that was really the only thing that I could do without making things way too busy or, like I said, drawing away from the focus of the three characters. And, you know, sometimes in art, less is more. I did not want to overcomplicate the piece, especially when I did not intend for it to get this complicated to begin with. So for what it is, it's, it's fine. It's certainly not bad, it's just I think I could have, if I went into it with a little more forethought and a little more planning, it would have turned out a lot better. 
but for what it is, it is pretty good. I'm definitely going to be trying to draw more casual illustrations like this in the future. I did enjoy doing it. It just takes three times as long as doing regular character art, so I don't do it very often. I'll do my best to work it into uh, my casual art, though. Now that I'm done drawing it, though, let's take a look at the whole thing. Despite a little bit of dissatisfaction that I have, overall, it turned out really good. Like I keep saying, I did not intend for this drawing to become this involved, so for what it is, it's good. I like it. And I like all three of these characters. They're all very dear to me and I have fun drawing them. Anyway, that is all the time that I have to talk about this half of the Kelhorns and also shoddy composition for backgrounds. Um, I will no doubt have more Kelhorn art to show off in the future. I love this family so very much and I'm planning a couple more illustrations featuring the other members of the family. I mentioned earlier that I wanted to do a full reference for Ophelia, so that'll probably be coming out in the future at some point. For now, though, thank you very much for watching. If there's anything you want to see me draw, or any questions you'd like answered about the characters I've talked about, or about anything at all, let me know. If you would like to see more of my art, you can follow me on social media. I'm on Tumblr and Twitter. I have a Patreon. All those links are in the description below. Once again, this has been Jask Draws, and I hope to see you in the future.